John Lennon once said that the Beatles have become as famous as Jesus. Well, in Japan right now, there's a celebrity who's become as famous as the Beatles. His name is Bobby Horner, American baseball star. The fact that Horner's come here at the height of his American career says a great deal about Japan's current economic muscle. And his year so far says an awful lot about the difficulty of exporting America's best, even most unique product to Japan. Outside Jingu Stadium in Tokyo, there's evidence of Bobby Horner's immense popularity almost everywhere you look. His arrival on the baseball scene here in Japan this spring was an event of literally national proportions. There's no way of, of preparing yourself for anything like that. You know, you've, you're on a plane for 10 and a half, 11 hours, you know, half of it asleep, you know, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, the reality you're in Japan and then you step off the plane and you're trying to orient yourself not only to the time change, but everything else, and then the cameras hit you, uh, and just, you know, multitudes of them. I mean, the flashes are going off just, just simultaneously, and you can't hardly even see. The media was here to acknowledge a coming of age for Japan. After decades of U.S. bench warmers and the occasional faded star, the Japanese could finally afford the best. They've been buying prime U.S. real estate, and now the Yakult Swallows had outbid the Atlanta Braves for a prime U.S. baseball player. At two million dollars or so a year, Horner was the highest paid player in Japanese baseball. But the Japanese have always been willing to invest in quality. After Horner's arrival, Swallow's attendance rose from around 20,000 to nearly 50,000 a game. The $2 million investment paid for itself in about a week and a half. The Swallow's huge parent company, Yaku, which sells health foods, benefited in other ways as well. When Horner hit six home runs in his first four games, Yakult's stock price followed a similar upward trajectory. Five months later, top of the fourth. The Yakult Swallows trail the Hanshin Tigers one to nothing. The game lacks a certain drama, however, since Yakult has long since dropped out of the pennant race and Bobby Horner is sidelined with a bad back. We're in the stands with the premier American sports writer on Japanese baseball, Robert Whiting. Baseball as played in America reflects the American culture. It's an individualistic game. In Japan, it reflects the Japanese culture. It's a group game. It's like oil and water. The two just don't mix. A Japanese baseball game may look familiar to Americans, but Whiting considers it an almost alien environment. Historically, that's been a big problem for American ball players. This year, it's been a problem for Bobby Horner. Uh, as much as the Japanese like Horner, uh, it upsets him that he doesn't come out and train for two and a half hours before the game like the Japanese do. I mean, they come out, uh, they do 45 minutes of stretching and running, jogging, and they're worn out by the time they get to batting practice. But, you know, Horner doesn't do anything. He'll, he'll take a few swings in the batting cage, but he just come out to the park, put his uniform on, and then play the game. The Japanese, uh, there's something sacrilegious about doing that. Tonight, the injured Bobby Horner may be committing the ultimate sacrilege. He didn't even come to the game. As Yakul takes the field in the top of the fifth, still down one nothing, Horner's teammate Leon Lee is the sole American representative. The baseball was the first sport introduced to Japan. Before then, sport did not exist. All there were were martial arts. So what the Japanese did was took the philosophy of uh, the martial arts development of spirit and endless training and put it onto baseball. That's why they start training at New Year's and continue year round, all the way till Christmas. That's why there's uh, spring training camp. They start at 7.30 in the morning and go to 10 at night. And maybe that's why the favorite Yankul cheer is we have to win this game at all costs. Unfortunately, you can't win them all. Despite the earnest urgings of the Yakul cheerleaders, the Hanshin Tigers are still ahead. The Japanese tend to approach baseball like there's no tomorrow. You know, they'll use their starting pitchers in relief and uh, they'll sacrifice fun. If a runner gets on base in the first inning, if the leadoff batter gets on base, so the next guy will sacrifice in the second. In other words, baseball here is played almost by rote. To us, such inflexibility can seem silly. Suppose there's a man on first and the cleanup hitter is up. According to Whiting, the Japanese have him bunt, even though his purpose in life is to hit home runs. So who's up now? Up oh, a bunt. There's that bunt you were talking about. Hanshin's cleanup hitter has just sacrificed. 
And that's the kind of situation Bobby Horner's had to face all year long. That's just the Japanese way. And that's the way it is. And you, after a while, you don't ask questions anymore. You just, because you know what the answer's going to be. So you don't ask. So you can put up with that for six months? You, you have to. You have to learn to. If you don't, you go crazy. This is the reaction of most American ball players here. They take the money and bunt. The most striking exception to this rule is an eccentric pitcher named Brad Leslie, who calls himself simply Animal. Animal is a phenomenon in Japan. He seems to have decided that if an American can't assimilate, why not exaggerate and capitalize on being a foreigner? Animal's caricature of an American plays well in Japan, where national and racial stereotyping is not all that unusual. Meanwhile, back at the Swallows game, it's the top of the sixth and reigning. Yakult's down 2 nothing, and Robert Whiting is talking about stereotypes. Among the many statistics that they'll flash on the TV screen when they're televising a game, along with the player's uh, batting average and his age and his position is his blood type, because the Japanese feel that blood type affects performance. Uh, players with type A are supposed to make good pitchers, and players with type B are supposed to make good hitters, and that sort of thing. You can see the Japanese character pretty clearly in a baseball stadium. If you look at the individual fans, they're all really quiet and well-behaved. No one will stand up and say, kill the umpire or, you know, take the bum out. Uh, because they don't want everybody to look at them. But once they're in a group and everybody else is yelling, then it's okay. There's nothing like this in American Major League Baseball. You can see out there in right field, they all have their umbrellas. That's not because it's raining, that's the aqua cheering section, that's their thing, everybody carries an umbrella. Japanese fans work hard, perform well, and expect the same of their team. If a player makes a major error, he can be yanked on the spot. Take you out of the game right there. It's a kind of, uh, it's, it's a punishment, I suppose, but it's also a way of appeasing the fans. Appeasing the fans? Sure, the fans get mad, the guy made an error, so you take him out of the game, and there's nobody for him to get mad at. Social harmony again. Yeah, that's right. This was the tight-knit world that Bobby Horner entered when the season began. An individual the crowd could admire. Here was an American product finally worth the money. An American product that worked. As long as Horner could maintain this image, he would be cheered, even if never integrated. But as the season wore on, Horner slowed down. Injuries hampered him, then family illness, and the Swallows drifted out of contention. Perhaps Bobby Horner was a typical American product after all. Big and powerful, but defective. You come over here and you're built up and you're hyped up so much that people just forget that you're a human being. They don't think you're human. It's 4 nothing Hunchin, bottom of the ninth. To Robert Whiting, the fact that even Bobby Horner has had problems here confirms a thesis he's writing about in a new book, that on and off the field, Japan and America remain worlds apart. Americans are outspoken, frank, the Japanese are not. The Japanese are very seldom tell you what's on their mind. They very seldom show their feelings. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the Japanese hate confrontation, the Americans seem to thrive on it. But does that mean that the two cultures can't get along? I think we can get along, but I wouldn't say that there's uh, either side is going to like it very much. Yakult has lost four to one. The rain draws a curtain on the evening. To the pessimist, east remains east, west west, and only grudgingly shall the twain meet. The optimist, however, is hoping for a whole new ball game, featuring two cultures with different strengths that have more to learn from each other than to reject. This is the CNN International Hour for Friday, June 9th. For more than 100 years now, the Japanese have been playing baseball. Indeed, baseball in Japan is a national pastime. Japanese follow their teams with a passion. 
So you might ask, how is Japanese baseball different from the American variety? Well, you'd be surprised. First of all, practice can last up to eight hours prior to a game. Batters bow to the umpires, and while individualism is glorified in America, just the opposite in Japan. The fascinating part of Japanese culture, so much so that Robert Whiting decided to write a book about it. Whiting is an American journalist based in Japan. In 1977, his book, The Chrysanthemum and the Bat, was voted by Time Magazine the best sports book of the year. Now his new book called You Gotta Have Wall, when two cultures collide on the baseball diamond. Robert Whiting joins us now in our New York Bureau. Your book, You Gotta Have Wa, the word wa means unity and harmony in Japanese. Very unlike American baseball, right? That's right. It's the most important ingredient in a Japanese baseball team. Uh, the Japanese have an expression, the nail that sticks up shall be hammered down, and they take it very seriously. So there's no room for, uh, uh, for clubhouse, uh, clubhouse bickering or salary squabbles. Uh, there was a union formed a couple of years ago in Japan, a baseball, pro baseball players union. The first thing the head of the players union said, a man who was the captain of the Tokyo Giants, uh, said was, we will never strike like the Americans do. How can they, how can they practice, like for, uh, for example, uh, before a night ball game there, they practice for up to eight right. hours. Well, I would think that once the game started, they'd be absolutely exhausted. Well, it's a very thorough practice. Actually, the game starts uh, around uh, uh, 6 or 6 o'clock in Japan, and so most of the team is out there by 1 o'clock or 1.30 going through calisthenics, and uh, they do a lot of running, do an hour of running and calisthenics and warm-ups before they even touch a ball. But there's always uh, a group of players on the team who aren't doing very well uh, who are requested to report to the park at, say, 10 o'clock in the morning for special practice, special fielding or hitting practice. I remember very well a while back when Bob Horner decided to leave the Atlanta yes. Braves and go play uh, Japanese baseball. What happened? Well, <clears throat> the, they offered him $2 million, and uh, he hit six home runs his first week, three home runs in his second game, and he thought that he had died and gone to heaven. This place is paradise, he said. And then he found out about the long pregame practices, uh, he found out about uh, the pre-game meetings, the game, uh, meetings during the game, uh, the meetings after the game, self-reflection conferences in which the coaches would go over the mistakes the players made. Uh, he found out about the press, uh, the three major dailies there, which have circulations of 8 million in the morning per day, plus uh, 14 major sports dailies with a total circulation of over 10 million which followed him everywhere he went. He would wake up in the morning, they'd be camped outside his apartment. They followed him to the park. They were constantly with him on a bullet train uh, from to Osaka. And he just, uh, I think the harassment just got to him. He couldn't handle the pressure. Now, when he left, he turned down a $10 million contract for three years at the end of the year. It must have been rougher than we could ever imagine. Uh, one of the things that we look upon is the difference between the way Japanese fans treat the game as opposed to American fans. Uh, what, what drew the Japanese to the game originally over 100 years ago? Uh, well, the game was introduced in uh, 1871 by an American professor named Horace Wilson who taught at uh, what is now the University of Tokyo. And up until then, Japan had been a closed country, a feudal country, and uh, they this, the concept of sport was completely alien to them. They had martial arts, which, were, which they did for purposes of military training, and sumo wrestling, which was a religious uh, ceremony. And so uh, they liked baseball, but the idea of playing sports for recreation or release of tension was something that was completely new to them. Do they, they, like, do they have fights in the field like they do in America? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, if, uh, uh, there's, there are brushback pitches, but in Japan it's considered uh, if a batter gets hit by a pitch, then that means he is not fast enough, he's not skillful enough to evade the pitch, so it's his fault. And if he does get mad and go punch uh, the pitcher, then they say it's, uh, uh, it shows weakness of character, a small heart. The good Japanese just, uh, if he gets hit by a pitch, he stands up and smiles at the pitcher. <laughs> And likewise, the, uh, the fans in the stands, they don't throw things in the field either like they do in America, right? No, they're very well behaved. They're very orderly. The one big difference in Japan is that uh, every team has a huge cheerleading section in the outfield, uh, several thousand strong. It's all voluntary. 
and uh, they scream and yell. Japanese are very reserved people. If you look at them sitting by themselves in the, in the infield seats, they hardly ever say anything. But together in a group, they just go crazy. Now, it's a good... as we were talking about at the beginning, and uh, as the title of your book alludes, the, the emphasis is on team spirit, on, on unity. And yet, aren't there uh, a few big-name stars in Japan? Oh, sure. There are big heroes. The, uh, the cleanup hitter for the Tokyo Giants, uh, until he got married last year, had stacks and stacks of albums, photos of young ladies proposing marriage to him. Uh, but there are no prima donnas. Uh, you know, Hara, uh, his name is Hara. He's the third baseman. Uh, he's been ordered to sacrifice bunt many times in the first or fourth inning, and he'll do it. He'll smile. He won't throw his bat or break the water cooler. He's out there in spring camp training 10 hours a day along with uh, the rawest rookie on the team. He never argues with the manager or criticizes the coach. If he doesn't like the lineup, he doesn't draw an X through it like Daryl Strawberry did the other day. <laughs> does, does, does baseball in Japan actually have an effect on Japan's politics, on its economy, things like that? Well, they say the, the Tokyo Giants are really popular. They're, like, they're a combination of the Mets, the Dodgers, and the Yankees all put together, the national team. And they say that when they don't win the pennant, uh, it affects the, the uh, economy. Uh, sales go down, and the suicide rate goes up, and uh, just uh, it's general, it causes a general depression in the country. If there's any one thing that we could learn about the Japanese through their baseball, what would it be? dedication i mean the japanese just don't give up they practice baseball uh, 365 days a year it's morning till night uh every time i come back to this country uh, it the thing that surprises me is if you call somebody's office here in manhattan at 10 minutes to five they're gone you can't get a hold of them in in tokyo the lights are on until eight or eight or nine o'clock at night they're very serious about uh Work. And and everything else. The book is right. called You Gotta Have War. Robert Whiting, thank you very much for joining us today on the International Hour.